So in doing an examination of the heart, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to be starting by inspecting. Typically, I'd have the patient in the gown, and I'd ask them to remove their gown. Um, after inspection, you're just looking for scars or any palpable uh, lifts of the chest. And if you do see an impulse of the chest, it could indicate um, a pathology. Next, you'd move on to palpation. There are a few tests that you're going to use. First is going to be looking for heaves. A heave is going to be found by placing the palm um, just, just uh, kind of on the sternum with the fingers facing upwards. A heave is going to be positive when your palm of your hand gets lifted off of the chest. And that could indicate a, uh, like a hypertrophy of the ventricles, either right or left. Next, you're going to look for thrills. In thrills, you're going to use three different hand placements. One is going to be uh, down by the, the fourth or the fifth intercostal space. Next one, just like the heave. And then the third location is going to be um, on the superior aspect, near the base of the heart, making a C around the left nipple. Um, what, the, what the thrills are going to be looking for are going to be um, disturbed blood flow or turbulent blood flow. And that's going to be kind of like a cat's purr underneath your fingers, and that's going to be the best way to describe that. Next, after um, the lifts and the, or after heaves and thrills, I want to feel for the PMI. And the PMI is the point of the maximum impulse, or known as the apical impulse. For doing that, I'm going to go underneath the left breast and ask the patient to breathe out and lean forward at the same time. I'm going to be feeling for the heart impulse. It's going to be typically dime-sized to penny-sized, and it's going to be the area where you can feel the beating against your hand. Typically, the PMI is going to be in the fifth, fourth or fifth intercostal space mid-clavicular line. Um, and it should be, like I said, about the size of a penny. For auscultation of the heart sounds, I'm going to be listening to five different areas. The aortic, the pulmonic, the tricuspid, the mitral, and then an area also known as the second pulmonic sound, which is going to be Irv's point. So first we're going to start with the aortic location. The aortic location is going to be found by finding the second intercostal space on the right side parasternally. So what does that mean? So we're going to find ribs two and three and go in between them. Then we're going to go parasternal, so just to the right of the sternum, because this is the patient's right side. And an easy way to find this is by finding this on the sternum, the, the high point. And that's going to be a point called the sternal angle or the angle of Louis. Um, that's the area where ribs two come in from each side. So to find the third, second intercostal space, I'm just going to go slightly lower, so just below rib two. So I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen for about a cycle or two, uh, just to make sure that there's no pathology going on. Uh, next location that I'm going to listen for is going to be the pulmonic region. And that, again, is going to be the second intercostal space, but this time the left parasternal area. And I'm going to do all these tests with my diaphragm first, and then I'm going to go through and uh, go through with the bell of my stethoscope. All right, so once we've done the pulmonic, now I'm actually going to skip to the second pulmonic sound, which is going to be known as Herb's point. Um, this is sometimes used, sometimes not. Um, but Herb's point is going to be so while the pulmonic was in the second intercostal space, Herb's point is going to be in the third intercostal space on the left side. And then I'm going to move on to the tricuspid valve. So second is pulmonic, third is Herb's, fourth intercostal space is going to be the tricuspid valve location, just to the left of the sternum, so parasternally left. And then lastly, I'm going to find the mitral valve location. And the mitral sound location is going to be on the fifth intercostal space, mid-clavicular line, which roughly lines up with the uh, PMI location. So it's going to be below the left breast, breast tissue. And if you have a larger woman, you might need to ask that their left breast be lifted up. So what I'm going to be listening for is I'm going to be listening for the rate, the rhythm, the intensity, the splitting, any murmurs or extra heart sounds that I'm hearing for, any rubs, or any uh, clicks. So I will go over a quick um, write-up of what I found in a healthy individual. All right, so how would I document what I heard? Um, I would describe it as a regular rate and rhythm with no uh, S3, 
no S4, no murmurs, no extra heart sounds. Um, I would say that the PMI is located um, in the fifth intercostal space, midclavicular line, about dime sized. Then finally, I'd say that there are no palpable heaves, thrills, and uh, enlarged PMI.